Hey, up next on the Mar Army Rock Show, we are always striving to find the best new music for you guys everywhere we look. And uh, there's a band out there right now called Alarm for War. We have got Buggy with us from Alarm for War. They've got a new album out called Enemies of the State. Buggy, welcome to the show, man. Oh, I'm good. Thank you. Totally appreciate it. Oh, no worries, man. And I appreciate you being here. Now, um, hey, so uh, let's first of all, let's give folks a little bit about your background. Now, um, for folks that may not know, and you're probably sick of highlighting your age, but you're you're on the younger side of have a person who would have a record out now. So, uh, how does a, a person 13 years old get himself a record release? Well, it's kind of funny because I was actually in the studio. I was sitting on the couch um, with, an, with another project, and the singer, a uh, very good singer, seasoned singer, noticed that I was singing right on key with what he was doing. So after that, I was asked, hey, can you do these songs in the studio? And then after doing that, by the way, um, previously the seasoned singer asked me to come in there and do backups, so I thought that was really cool. So after um, doing it in the studio, I, I had it, first of all, I had a lot of fun. It was a total blast. And then after that, people were like, wow, you sound like, you know, uh, Alice in Chains, kind of like a Pantera, Rage Against the Machine on steroids, as we like to call it. <laughs> so that, that's kind of how we, that's kind of how I kind of got pulled into it away, in a way, but I've been, you know, always around the house singing and rapping, so I've kind of been around it my whole life. Now, you must have had some kind of professional exposure prior to that to have landed in that studio, one would think. Do you have some other singing background previous to, to this uh, project? Yeah, well, actually, it was it was my uh, my parents my parents project that they were that I, I just happened to be along for the ride to see that thing come out, and then as I said, the story kind of unfolded from there. So um, we're going to talk about the new record in a minute, but tell us how did the rest of the band that we see in the music video and here on the band come together and form? Well, actually, the band the band kind of came came together after that. So after that, uh, we went you know went to the guitar player. Hey, what do you think of this? He really liked it, so after that, very good guitar player, Kisa, and after that, he's like, hey, let's, let's try this out, so we kind of came in after that, and then the bass player really liked it, we came in after that, and then the whole band kind of came together after that. So the new record, as I mentioned, is titled Enemies of the State. Now tell us a little bit about the making of that record. Uh, who was your producer, and where did you record it? Um, Brian Bart uh, with Logic Recordings, he recorded it, and we recorded it in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. So give us a little background on that. How long was the uh, making of the record? You know, from the time you guys started writing music to the final production, how long was that process? Oh, that, that was about six months. So after the music was done, um, we started putting together the lyrics, you know, the whole band kind of, hey, let's add this, let's add this in the studio. So the music was done. Um, it, was, it was probably about around a six-month process. So as I just said, the music was done first, and then we added the vocals after that. So about a six-month process. So the song I was drawn to first from the release uh, was the tune Love and Not Hate. So tell me a little bit more about that song. Well, you know, it's kind of like a Rage Against the Machine on steroids type of a song. <laughs> um, Love and Not Hate, basically, the song, it bas basically the meaning of the song is if you've seen, say you've seen someone in the street, would it be love not, not to just not say anything to them and let them get hit by a car? Or would it actually be love to tell them, you know, to get out of the street, otherwise you're going to get hit by a car? So in other words, it's just kind of, you know, telling people the truth. The whole around this band is just to tell people the truth. Because in a lot of ways, mainly the young people, they've been subjected to everything and protected from nothing. So as we are, we're just taking, you know, through our lyrics, reaching the next, the next generation of young people, um, with our new EP, Enemies of the State. So if I could lead a little more into that, Rocky. Um, the d Day Turn Tonight, it actually is about a kid. He was named Zach, and he was hooked on drugs, or he, and he was told to stop, or one day it just might have cost him his life. After doing drugs in a bathroom, he was found dead on the floor. And then standing around his dead body, this was at a drug rehabilitation system, standing around his dead body, someone in the crowd shouted out, well, where's your God at now? And then someone else in the cr crowd replied, the same place he was when he was warning them. So as I said, we're just we're a youth band sticking up for the youth, young people of this new of, of this new up and coming generation. Excuse me. Now uh, it's funny because I was good, I'm going to skip around on the question I was going to ask you because of what you just said. So you know, with uh, somebody your age, you sound like you have a lot of uh, savvy about what's going on in the world and politics. Are you somebody that pays a lot of a close attention to the news and politics? Well, you know, we're kind of letting the lyrics lyrics do the talking as far as that. Mainly, like like I said, just sticking up for the young for the young people of today's generation. Because as musicians, we feel it's our job to you know 
tell tell them the truth. So steering away from that, just kind of letting the lyrics do the talking for themselves. Now, I had mentioned the tune I was drawn to the most was Love Not Hate. Now, uh, there was a music video out there for that. So uh, two questions. Was that your first music video? And tell me a little bit about the making of it. Well, yeah, that, that was actually a blast. You know, driving to Tennessee with the boss. And once we were there, I was, of course, everybody's a little nervous when they start out. So I was, you know, I was nervous. I was like, I'm excited, but I'm kind of not excited. I'm in, in between. So Love and Not Hate was actually the very first music video I've ever recorded in my life. And that, after that song, just, you know, 10 seconds into it, I'm like, wow, this is cool. And then 15 seconds into it, I'm like, hey, when are we going to do the next song? Yeah. So that was, that was probably the most funnest one to um, record at the music, as far as the music videos go. So what was the thing, you know, being as it was your first music video, what surprised you the most about that whole process of making a video? Well, I just like the fact how, the fact, excuse me, how basically everything's done, everything's done, the music videos and the recording, you know, perfectly. It's not like, okay, that was pretty good, let's go on to the next song. Everybody's like, no, it has to be perfect, this is how we're doing it. So after I did, you know, we did the video a lot of times, and after that, it was just having a lot of fun. So I pulled the thing. It didn't necessarily surprise me, but I just liked how it kept having the emphasis of, no, that was a good one, but we need to do it again, you know, takes and stuff like that. So Now, you know, you guys are a rap rock kind of band. Do you, do you define yourself primarily? Like, what's your first drawn to? Are you drawn more to being a rapper or being a singer, or is it equal? Well, it's kind of equal because what's cool is if you don't reach people on the rap, I mean, on, uh, as far as on social media, we've been getting a lot of comments from both sides. So people sometimes people say, don't necessarily like the rapping, but the singing sounds like Alice in Chains. Or some people say, I don't like the singing, but we like the rapping. So we're kind of um, hopefully, you know, winning people on both sides. So if you don't win them on this, you win them on that, and then they kind of win them all over. So we're kind of an equal of both singing and rapping. Man, it's a great genre out there and one I love. And I, and I read a little in your bio that you were influenced, I think, by a P.O.D., one of my favorites. Now, who got you into the rap rock genre? Well, as I said previously, I did listen to P.O.D. I've just kind of been, as, as I mentioned earlier, kind of just been around rap. You know, you got a lot of these um, CDs in, you know, in, in our collection over here, kind of got a lot of rap and singing. So I, it was kind of like a both sides. And then, as I said, I listened to P.O.D. So that's... I, that's how it kind of unfolded after listening to P.O.D. I'm like, wow, I really like rap. So that's kind of how it came from there. Now, it looked like um, your first official show as a band was a couple weeks ago. So tell us about the experience and reflect back on it. Well, Top Fuel, it was at the Top Fuel Saloon. And wow, I mean, it was just... I, I had so much fun with it. Like, you know, we had we had the backstage, and then in the backstage, of course, like I said earlier, you're like, oh, this is nerve-wracking. You got all those people in front. But, you know, what was cool is after, after um, you know, the band started playing, and then I jumped up there and started rapping, it was just like kind of like with the music videos, you know, 20 seconds into it. I was like, wow, this is, this is a blast. I can't wait to do the next song. So that was, that was really fun. Now, uh, I saw that show. Uh, what are your plans for the near future here? Do you guys have some uh, upcoming shows, or do you plan on going out on tour? Yes, we do. Yep, we're, we're actually getting a bunch of band offers, uh, such as Red, you know, Power Man 5000, etc. So we are, our guys are working on it. We have up-and-coming tours in the future. Uh, if you visit us on social media, you can um, follow up with us on there. So we, we do have up-and-coming tour plans, yes, sir. So uh, I got to ask you, man, I've had a couple uh, of artists, you know, of your talent on this show before, and I'm just curious, do your friends know what you do? Do they know, like, uh, do they pay attention, or is it under the radar a little bit? Um, well, it's kind of cool, because my, my main friend, he's like, you know, sometimes you go on your social media on a Learn for War, and all of a sudden he's like, you see the interaction, so they're, they're a part of what we're doing. Now, were you trained musically in school? Is this something that you did, like, did your education, or were you in a band and chorus and things in school, or did you just pick this up outside of the realm of school? It, it was kind of funny, because I just kind of, I guess, kind of picked it up. I didn't go to school for music at all. Like I said earlier, um, I was just kind of always, you know, rapping and singing and stuff like that. So after it was funny, uh, excuse me, funny was after doing the recording, people started saying you sound like, Pantera, Rage Against the Machines, Alice in Chains. I didn't even know who these people were until I looked <laughs> them up online. So I wasn't trying to sound like anybody. It's just kind of how it came out. 
Um, you know, I recorded half the EP at the age of 12 and then the other half at the age of 13. So I, I didn't know who these guys were until I looked them up. So, so as you look ahead now, um, you've got a huge, long musical career ahead of you. Uh, do you kind of ever think about, gee, I wonder where am I going to be in five years? Where would it be perfect for you? Like, what would you want to be doing in five years with this band or, or as a musician? Well, you know what? Um, as, uh, the up-and-coming five years is hoping to get, you know, broader, reaching, reaching the masses, reaching more people um, with our message. So I suppose, I suppose the near future would just be, you know, obviously start out small and then you kind of keep building up. So just keep keeping building it up until, you know, we're, we're reaching the masses with the Alarm for War message. Well, I love the fact that your band has a message behind them. Uh, we've been really uh, enjoying listening to your music. Uh, the band is called Alarm for War. We've had Buggy, their lead vocalist slash rapper slash singer, uh, and the, the record is Enemies of the State. Um, Buggy, where do you want folks to go to pick that up? Do you want to go to iTunes or a website? Where do you want them to pick that up at? Yes, sir. They're on uh, iTunes and Amazon. If you go to alarmforwar.com, you can find out more information there. Also, Alarm for War on Facebook has a lot of those links where you can click on it and order and pre-order and stuff like that. Alarm for War on Twitter and Alarm for War on um, Instagram, excuse me. So um, once you guys get a minute, check us out. We'd love to hear from you. Well, man, uh, much respect to you as a new band. I just am very impressed with your talent, and uh, we're really pleased you came and joined us on the show. So, uh, everybody, that's Buggy from Alarm for War. Go pick out their album, Enemies of the State, right now. Hey, man, thanks a lot for being on our show. Thank you, Rocky. Totally appreciate it. Have a good day, man. Thanks. You too.